Hey folks! Well, today I wanted to introduce the use of command line arguments in C++. So when you're running a program, things like ls or cp, right, any of the, the different programs that you commonly run from the command line, one of the things you've probably noticed is that you can provide extra arguments when you type that in. So when you run ls, you can specify, well, I want to list what's in a specific directory, right? You can say ls and then the name of the directory. Or if you want to copy one file into another, you can type in cp, the first file name, and then the new file name. And it copies from the first file into the second file. Well, each of these things, ls, for instance, is just another C program. cp is just another C program. But somehow we're able to pass effectively these parameters to the program when we type in the command. So somewhere there's got to be a way for us when we're writing our program to detect if the user actually typed in extra arguments when they ran that command and to somehow grab what those arguments were and use them inside the program. So these are called command line arguments, right? Parameters are arguments that we type in on the command line when we run a program. Right? This is completely different than, than standard input, things like CN or SCANF. Right? This is the program actually grabbing in what you typed as part of starting the execution of the program. So command line arguments, we want to take a look at how you do this in C++. Now, again, lots of the different Linux utilities that we wind up using are just C programs. So CP, LS, MV, RM, etc. If you ever want to actually experiment with some of this, this is way beyond the, the scope of what we're doing in the course, but if you just want to see what some of this stuff looks like, then you can see the source code for most of these programs through uh, the Git Savannah and New Org. Um, I just want to give you a quick look at what one of these looks like, just for a quick boo. So again, if you go into this uh, Git repo, Again, there's a whole host of uh, different Linux programs that you can have a play with. So let's say we wanted to know what the copy command does. So cp. Again, we dive in there and you'll see right, all the list of the libraries that they include and you'll see a ton of them. A list of the other files that they include and a whole bunch of defines and you'll see structs. And now we know what structs are. Um, enumerated types we haven't gone into yet, but again, you can start looking at what all of the different chunks of source code looks like, all of the different functions and op um, options that they support, and somewhere down here, uh, where are we? Yeah, somewhere in here, you find the main routine. And if you happen to notice, in this case, so they've got their int main, but all of the main routines we've looked at so far have just had the kind of open and close round bracket, no parameters inside. Here, this int argc and char star star argv, these are the things that actually allow us to detect and capture arguments that the user has typed in on the command line. So argc and argv are going to be the topic of discussion for today. So just to have a quick play with, again, some of what this looks like in practice. Right, let's suppose we've got a C++ program, you know, myprog.cpp, and we've compiled it and produced an executable. And I actually want to type in a command, right? I type in my dot slash myprogx, and then just a whole bunch of other things on the command line. Well, if we do things right, that program can detect each of these things. It can figure out what its executable is named, it can figure out what each of these beasts are, and so the program that we've got set up is actually going to do just that, and it's going to echo them back to me. And so it's going to come back and say, well, the name of the executable that you just ran, so when I typed in that program, the name of the executable is, you know, dot slash myprogx, and the different things you typed in were, and it goes through and it captures each of them. And if I type in dot slash myprogx foo, then it detects that it was just foo. If I type in just my prog x, then there aren't any arguments. It just gives you back the name of the executable here. So somehow the program's capable of detecting and using that information. 
And so if we have a look at the source code that I've got there, again, you'll see that in our main routine, it's got, once again, this int argc and char star argv. Um, actually, in the, the example that we looked at before, it, it showed char star star argv. I'm going to kind of prefer this notation, but either works. So char star argv and the open close square brackets. But this is the kind of thing that we're going to use as a mechanism for getting at those command line arguments and doing things with them. So we'll talk about it a little bit and then play with some more. So these two parameters that we're going to add are int argc and char star argv in the open close square brackets. So what happens when your program is run is any additional arguments that you passed, so things like the foo or whatever else I typed in on the line when I started the program running, these are automatically passed to the main routine as parameters and the main routine can grab them, can access them, if we've set up our main routine parameters like this. So you don't have much flexibility in this. This is the, uh, um, the parameter list that we want to use. So what's going to happen is when the call to main is made, it will automatically count how many arguments were passed to main. It'll automatically set the values for these two parameters. So argc, by the time main starts, argc will automatically have count of how many things you typed in on the command line. Argv is going to be an array that actually references all of the different words that you typed in on the command line. So, for instance, in that example that we looked at just a second ago, if I typed in, you know, my dot slash, my prog x foo, for instance, the count argc is going to be two. It counts the dot slash my prog x as one word. It counts the foo as a second. So argc is going to be two when it gets into the main routine. argv zero is going to have this text, the dot slash my prog x, and the argv one is going to have this text, the foo, and it's going to have them both stored as those null terminated character arrays that we talked about with c strings. Or if I was to type in, again, the dash r and a 99 or something like that. Again, in this case, argc is going to be 4, right? The count of the number of words on the line. Right? My prog x, foo, dash r, and the 99. So argc is going to be 4, and the four words are going to be in argv0, we'll have the my prog x, in argv1, we'll have the foo, in argv2, we'll have the dash r, in argv3, we'll have the 99. So each of these things is automatically set up by the time it gets into the main routine. It's not something that you have to do manually. You just have to have your main routine set up so that it can detect it. All right. So again, argc and argv. Argv, again, basically gives you access to a whole bunch of these kind of little text blobs, these character arrays that have the different words in them. So again, if we were to run our program with dot slash my prog, blah, foo, 42 exclamation mark. argc is the count of those four things that I typed in on the command line. And then each element of the argv array has one, accesses one of these strings. So the string dot slash my prog, the string blah, the string foo, the string 42 exclamation mark. So we can get at these things inside the main routine. So sample program, again, here we've got, you know, we include our libraries and our namespace and that sort of thing. We use our int argc, our char star argv, and then inside we'll just go through and print each of them, which is pretty much what that other sample program was doing a couple moments ago, where it says for each position in that array from zero to um, argc minus one, we'll go through, print out the number, and then print out what's in argvi. So print out what's in argv0, print out what's in argv1, print out what's in argv2. And again, what you would see as the output if we were to run 
dot slash my prog, you know, 1.234, ab dot cde. Again, it's just taking each of these things as one word, one blob of non-white space characters. So it's printing out i, and then a colon, and then whatever the, the word is. So for the zeroth argument, it's dot, dot slash my prog. For the argument one, it's 1.234. For argument two, it's the ab dot cde, etc. Right, so again, we can access this stuff inside our programs. And again, each entry of that argv array is text. If, uh, if we scan back to that definition, again, argv is essentially an array of pointers to characters, which we'll get into in pointers within a few days, actually. But uh, this is effectively giving us kind of like access to an array of character arrays, more or less. I'll waffle on that for the moment. So each entry of argv gives us access to one blob of text. So the dot slash my prog 123, that 123 and then a null terminator would be in argv1, or would be accessed through argv1. We can do, we can use the argvi's the same way we'd, we would use any other null terminated string. So I could, if I had a character array, I could use string copy to copy what's in argvi into that character array. If I had a string, I could assign argvi to that. If I wanted to see out argvi, I can do that. Um, a to i is the function that takes, uh, again, an ASCII string and tries to figure out the equivalent integer value. So I could apply a to i and try and translate, if you like, whatever that ith argument is into an integer and store that. But again, we can use these argvi's any way we like, and argc tells us how many of them there are. So in this case, a uh, little program where we're going to go through, and this program is going to expect the user to provide two positive numbers as the command line arguments. So you know, if the program was named myprog, they could enter myprog, 75.4 and 0 0.123, right? So the, the idea is they're supposed to provide these two arguments in addition to the name of the program itself. So if we want to do a little error checking to make sure that they typed in a valid command to run this program, argc should be three, right? One for the name of the executable and then two for the, the numbers that they were providing. So if argc isn't three, then we can give them an error message and say, oh, nope, you didn't run this correctly. You're supposed to run it with two positive numbers. Right? So we can do a little error checking to make sure they pass the right number of arguments along. And then after that, you know, the else case here would be where they did provide the right number of arguments, but we should check and make sure that the two things that they provided were actually positive numbers. So here, I'm going to take use of, or make use of the ASCII to float routine, ATOF, that again, tries to translate ASCII strings into floating point values. So as long as what they typed in was a valid number, then it'll give you the, the correct result. If what they typed in wasn't a number, then it'll just give you back a zero. Here, since they're supposed to be entering positive numbers, so values greater than zero, it doesn't matter. Anything, that's, anything that comes back from A to F that's zero or less, as far as we're concerned, isn't valid. So what we'll do is we'll call a to f on argv1, right, and try and translate the first argument they gave us into a float, store that. Call a to f on argv2, try to translate that into a float, and store that. So n1 and n2 have the two numbers if they gave us valid data, and they've got either negative or zero if they gave us invalid data. So we can go through and check if it's valid. If either one of those things, if n1 is less than or equal to zero, or if n2 is less than or equal to zero, then we can tell them, ah, <laughs> you must have entered a non-number or a zero or a negative. So we can give them some kind of an error message. And then otherwise, if we get past all of that, we know that they actually gave us two positive numbers. So they typed in the name of the program, two positive numbers, they hit enter, and all is good. And we can do in here whatever it is we wanted to do with the program or with the, the numbers that they provided as command line arguments. So this is a pretty common kind of structure. 
If we're expecting them to give command line arguments, we check that they gave the right number of them. And we check to make sure if they gave the right number, we check to make sure that they had the right data type. Um, you know, if they were supposed to give us file names, we can check and see that the files actually exist. If they were supposed to give us integers, we can check if they're actually integers. If they were supposed to give us floats, we can check if they're actually floats, etc. So we can see if the if the values they provided were actually valid for what we were expecting. And if so, we can go ahead and run the program. And if not, we can give them an appropriate error message. All right. So we can go through quite happily and uh, and play with command line arguments now, see what kind of uh, flexibility this adds to the programs that we can write. All right, I will leave that there for now. We will practice with these a fair bit as the term plows along here, but this is, a, again, a really useful addition to our uh, selection of skills and features.